give back to the to the game, the younger fighters, and and, and advice and stuff because he's been a consummate professional. You know, you can you know um, the, the the greatest um, consummate professional died Saturday, Marvelous Marvin Hagler. He was truly the transquential ultimate professional boxer. Yeah. You know, I mean, amazing, loyal, loyal, um, classy. There's nothing wrong with what he did. And he's never involved in a controversy. Just a, 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 a classy guy. I'll tell you, I'll, t- I'll tell you a great marvelous Marvin Hagrid story. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay? That you, that your, your, your listeners will really like. Okay. okay. He was in some big fight. I don't know. It was, it was you know, after he became a celebrity type, you know, champion, like everybody knew him, a household name. It was maybe the Hagler fight, maybe Mugabe. You know, one of those fights. Okay, one of those bigger fights. Maybe it was Duran. I don't know. But he, Woody Petronelli, his trainer, told me the story. In, in like 1994, he told me the story. And I remember, I, I remember like it was yesterday. I remember Goody sitting across me. This is what he told me. He came back on Sunday. Yeah. From the fight. And he always used to get back in the gym on Monday morning, you know, Monday afternoon, first thing, as soon as he got back to get ready for his next fight. That was his mentality because he was always in great shape, you know, and he was a real professional. He called up Goody. He says, Goody, I can't come to the gym till Wednesday. He says, I've been out, as you know, I've been out, out, away from home for two months and I have a lot of things to do with my wife and my kids for the next two days. I'm sorry, I can't come to the gym till Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even have a fight schedule. <laughs> <laughs> but but that that's the kind of professional that he, that's the kind of professional that he was, like 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 Well, not only not only was up, he was going to get the gym. Not only was he upset he couldn't get the gym. He was apologizing emphatically to his trainer. Yeah, like he, you like know? like he really screwed up or something. Right. So I said to Goody, his trainer, Goody Petronelli. I said, Goody, what'd you say to him? Oh, Marvin, don't worry, it's all right. I look, I'm looking forward to seeing you on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> what else could you say to him? I mean, right? nothing oh, really. No. Now these days, these these putz fighters, they don't even get the they get in the gym till they have a side contract for a fight. Then they come in forty pounds overweight, and they spend the whole time losing weight. Comical. Yeah, yeah. They, they don't they don't make them like Marvin Hagler anymore. I mean, but I but no. I but I think with that fight on Saturday, I think I think that fight on Saturday was a fight that Marvin Hagler would have been proud of. Charlo Tito and Estrada. That was Mugabe and Hagler Mugabe with no stoppage. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. No question about it. No question about it. But yeah. I'll, I'll tell you one other marvelous Marvin Hagler story. Okay, go ahead. He tell me all the Marvin Hagler stories, as many as you can think of. He was very, very cheap. He went into this restaurant for dinner in, in uh, right on the edge of Brockton, where he lived. And uh, the, uh, the, he's, we, and there was his family eating, and, his, and the waitress says to him, um, um, Myron, my, 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 my was Marvin, can I get an uh, autographed picture? He says, of course. He runs out to the car, opens up the trunk, comes in with a picture, and hands it to her. So Neil comes. The check comes. And he pays and, and leaves. He's out, out the door. He's halfway across the street. And the owner comes right out. Marvin, can I see you for a minute? He goes, sure. He turns around, comes back. He says, hey, Marvin, you didn't pick the waitress. He says, oh, you know, he said, I gave her an autographed picture she asked for. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I, there, there, there's, there's, a, there's one other one I'll tell you. Okay. How he was the constant professional. So this one fighter, I don't know who it was at the time, um, used to come in the gym basically 15 minutes late every day and leave the first one to leave like 15 minutes early. So Marvelous Marvin says to him one day, he says, son, he said, the guy was a younger fighter. You know, Marvin was like older at the time. He says, son, he says, can I explain something to you? He says, yeah, you leave 15 minutes early, early every day. You get here 15 minutes late. You leave 15 minutes early, it's a half hour. 
You're supposed to work out for two and a half hour, uh, two and a half hours, right? He says, well, that half hour times five is two and a half hours. That means you're missing one day a week. Wow. So this 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 guy this guy Marvin Hagler he 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 was he was that serious about his discipline oh, of boxing. He, he he was he was a guy that was as serious as a heart attack. So I'll, I'll tell you two more quick Marvin okay. Hagler story, then we'll move on because we right. like both of them. Okay, both of them were the two. Okay, he um the, 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 there was a rumor there was a story that the pension always got ten percent apiece. They didn't. They got thirty percent. 15% apiece. The, the one brother was the trainer manager. The other one was the manager. Okay. And the one was Pat. One was Goody. Goody was the trainer manager. The other one was the manager. Okay. The, the contract was coming due. He's making millions. So they said to Marvin, he says, Marvin, you know, if you, you know, if we want, if you, if uh, we'd like to resign you, but he said, we'll take less. He says, you ain't guys ain't taking less. He says, you guys got a lot of responsibility. He says, you're going to get your full cut. Don't insult me. Yeah. That's, that's how, why? Because he's loyal. These guys helped raise him. He came to uh, Brockton when, from New York with no, when he was a kid with no father figure. And these guys helped raise him. And that's how loyal he was. Then, the last story is really funny. So, he's getting ready to fight Ray Leonard. They're, mm. they're negotiating the purse in Aaron's office, a Tagler and the two and the two Petronellis. And they finished up on a purse. I don't know what it was, eight, nineteen million dollars, or ever what the figure crazy figure was at the time. Remember, nineteen million in nineteen eighty seven. That's you know how much that is today? Oh my god. Was it like eighty million, a hundred? Oh my god. Well you have to at least times three. So that would be like uh, fifty seven million dollars today. Okay. Okay. So at least times three. I'm not a mathematician, but I'm, I'm pretty good. Pretty good at math. So, anyways, here's what happened. They start the, the Petronellis were as cheap as Marvin, and they're now negotiating training expenses and how many first class, or how many airplane tickets, how many first class, how many coach, uh, how many tickets, how many suites, how many regular hotel rooms. He says, Aram says, Marvin, fuck that. Marvin wasn't saying nothing. There was a petrol. Like, Marvin, fuck these guys. He says, I'm giving you guys 500000 in your own account, and you guys can spend whatever you want. You're on your own. Don't bother me with this horseshit. <laughs> and so Marvin says, Marvin says to Bob, he says, I never seen a guy give away 500000 so quick. Quick, He says, it'd be upset about it. Never, that never happens, man. Oh my God, guy! He, he had a good sense of humor too. You know, he uh, one time when he was training for one of the big fights at a country club in Palm Springs, I had a friend of mine, um, Bob Shanks, out there, and Bob was at a country was, was at a Chrysler convention at that same uh, um, resort hotel and, and country club. So. My, uh, they run into each other at the dining room. Uh, he's Mar my guy sitting across from Marvin. My guy's a big fight fan. And he says, he says, Marvin, he says, you want to go a few rounds? He goes, no, but I know you do. <laughs> <laughs>